Okay, up next is a Fisher 550T. <clears throat> Solid state. Everything works on it. Uh, this is going to be a pretty uh, simple video. Um, so FM pulls in stations great. AM works great. Uh, only issue are that I've found so far are um, some dirty controls. So what I'm going to do with this is um, you can see stereo light beacons coming on. Tuning meter works great. So this is just going to be a basic uh, cleanup here. So. I'll, uh, I'm going to open this up, clean the pots, um, clean up this cabinet, hit it with some uh, feed and wax, and get this one moving, moving along. This came in with uh, Sony TC530 reel-to-reel, uh, -reel, some leak speakers. Uh, there'll be a, a, you, in fact, the video's already been released on that, most likely. Uh, some leak speakers, and what else did this come with? Oh. Uh, Garrard Lab 80 turntable that I haven't even thought about working on yet because Yeah um, Not my favorite things to work on so anyway, what I'll do is um, Maybe I'll just do a, this will be kind of a different video Maybe more along the lines of what I used to do if I can position the camera. I'm just going to uh, Speed through disassembly and cleaning this and then I'll you know come back and talk about it if I find anything interesting I will stop and discuss, but this should be pretty straightforward.
Man, they built this to not come apart. Uh, growing up as a child of the you know, late 70s, early 80s, I remember Fisher as being kind of crappy. <laughs> this is when Fisher was uh, was producing some, uh, some pretty good stuff. So um, here are the pots. One thing that I, I mean, it's really not relevant to what I'm going to be doing, but um, got this from a guy locally. His dad bought this and, you know, had the speakers and the reel-to-reel -reel and the turntable in the 60s uh, when he was stationed in the Air Force over in Turkey. So uh, I'm an Air Force vet, so I think that's kind of cool. And I have every manual receipt. I mean, this was like a time capsule. Um, and it was really cared for very well. This Fisher weighs a ton. So if you're ever going to service one of these, especially in the wooden case, holy smokes. It's like they have bricks in here or something. So I'm going to go on to do just a basic basic uh, cleaning of the switches and, and pots. I'm going to leave the, the volume power switch. Uh, yeah. I may leave that one alone. Just because I don't like to, to spray stuff in, in power switches. Um, I'll test it out just to make sure there's no uh, scratchiness in it. But um, the only I only notice scratchiness in the uh, the treble in the bass. So anyway, and they're they're pretty gummy. So all right, so on to uh, to clean the pots. Yeah, I'm gonna do the shaky cam thing for uh, just a few here. So this popped out. I'm not sure what that is to, I think. Man, I don't know where that came from. I think, uh, just shining my light around to see if there's uh, another one of these somewhere, but I don't see, huh, I don't see what that is. It's like a rubber, 
Looks like a little piece of rubber. So I'm gonna see if I can figure out where this came from. Um, so interesting things about this receiver. So check out these caps. Uh, it says West Germany, so that's, that's cool. Um, and then, okay, so I'm actually going to be shooting someday um, a series where, if you look at this amplifier board, um, or uh, this might be the pre, uh, I don't think this is, I, I don't remember. Uh, I'd have to look at a schematic. But see this, see these two, see these two things here? You have one for each channel. And these are known to go bad. And there's no replacement. If you look at this thing, there's like, what do you replace that with? Um, you can build, you can build these. Uh, you buy a board and, and uh, using the schematic, you can actually build whatever this component is. And there's, a, there's a, a number to it and I just, I'll flash it up on the screen. I've got it written down on, on the, the other one. I was waiting on a new amp board to see if I can maybe get a good one, but I think it might be a cool project to see if I can build one of those. So anyway, this one is good. Um, so I'm not going to worry about that. Um, check out this cap. That's that's pretty sketchy right there. Right, some some crappiness on that on that cap. I don't know if these are stuffed or not. I have to look. I think they are though, because if you look at all of the connectors on the bottom, so these are probably. Stuffed, I would say. Yeah, they are. So what do I mean by stuffed? Um, my Macintosh has, has these, and other receivers have them as well. If you look at the cap on the side, see all those different values? So this cap is, is basically all of these different capacitors, or this can, I should say, is stuffed with all these different capacitors, and they're all linked together. So... Am I going to rebuild these? No. Nope. Uh, I'll talk to the shop owner, see if he wants to do anything with it. But, you know, this thing has been working fine. Again, this channel is not for uh, for restoring every piece of equipment that comes, comes our way. You know, I repair things. If I do a restoration, it's typically a personal restoration, just something that I'm doing. So, um, you know, just like your car, they don't rebuild your engine every time something's wrong with it. They just kind of fix what's broken. It's kind of the same concept here. So, um, so anyway, uh, yeah. So I'm going to uh, test this out. Make sure I got rid of all the scratchiness and button it back up. Clean the cabinet. I will talk to the owner about this. I always snap a pic and then just tell him what's going on with it. So there are some websites where you can buy these pre-built. Um, I don't know what he's going to want to put into this, but because again, this is not mine. So you know, you're always doing whatever the customer wants. So, um, yeah, I know there are a couple of websites, at least for my Mac, I can buy one that's pre-stuffed. Pre I don't remember the website name. It's been a while since I've looked into it. So, anyway, enough rambling. Let me get to uh, testing this out and uh, putting it back together. If, assuming I don't find anything, the next shot will be of the Fisher back together and all cleaned up. All right, Fisher's done. <clears throat> I just love the look of these with the cabinets. Um, I mean, cleaned up really good. This wood was so dry. I mean, this just sucked up that feed and wax. So I'm actually going to let this sit. It's you're supposed to let it sit for 20 minutes. I'm going to let it sit. I'm going to do it again. Let it sit, and then and then uh, wrap it up. But I just love the look of. Uh, I'm, I'm not crazy about the fake <laughs> veneer here, but you know, Pioneer 1000s, Sansui 5000s, 4000s, 7000s. Um, Right, I mean, kind of pick your manufacturer from this from this era. The Kenwood, uh, what KR sixty six hundred? I think it's a great looking receiver. Uh, this one's really cool looking. So I wanted to be very careful around the dial glass and make sure not to get any. Well, I guess that that's back behind there, so I may have to clean that up a little bit. But so this is done, I and mean, this was just a basic, uh, just just kind of a basic. Um, I wouldn't even really call it a service, just, you know, cleaning the controls and, and really cosmetically cleaning it up. Um, so, discussed with the owner, what we're going to do with this actually is we're going to um, have this as like a shop receiver. Um, so, we're going to put it out and put it through its paces and if it develops any, uh, any weird issues, um, you know, uh, we'll look at, uh, at doing some more work on it. But uh, things sounds great. It was well cared for. So... Anyway, I'm going to wrap this uh, video up on the Fisher 550T. 
So as always, if you like what you see, hit like, hit subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next one.